two-thirds of the way into the season, man. I mean, like, a few weeks ago, it was like August. And now it's 20 degrees and snowing outside about a week after Thanksgiving. What is going on, everybody? I am Mac, back with another video. These are my Week 13 picks of the 2023 NFL season. As always, do me a favor, like, comment, subscribe, follow on Instagram. Link is in the box below. So, yeah, pretty solid week in uh, week 12. I went 11-5. and five. And for the season, I'm now 118 and 62 as we enter the final third of the season. As I said, uh, six teams on the bye this week. Buffalo, Chicago, Vegas, Minnesota, the Giants, and Baltimore all on the bye. So, uh, yeah, 13 games. And honestly, these are a pretty interesting slate of games. And let's just not waste any more time. Let's jump right into it. These are my week 13 picks of the 2023 NFL season. Let's get it started. Of course, obviously, we got Thursday night football between the Seattle Seahawks and the Dallas Cowboys. This game is interesting because both these teams played on Thanksgiving last week. So... Really, there's no advantage with the rest factor for either team. I guess really the only factor that I can say is that the Seahawks are coming off a loss. They had a really bad showing at home against the 49ers outside of a couple of games. While the Dallas Cowboys did what they do best, which is just beat up on bad teams as they demolished Washington on Thanksgiving 45 to 10 including a historic pick six by the Dallas Cowboys but if I had to give the advantage to one team in this matchup I would give it to Dallas because they stay at home while the Seahawks have to travel from Seattle to Dallas that's really the only advantage that I got for this game uh the Seahawks I mean They've been a tricky team to pick this year. They got swept by the Rams, lost the first game to San Francisco, and they beat the Cardinals pretty, you know, it was a hard-fought game. So they've struggled against their own division this year. But the Cowboys, you know, the narrative with them is always, oh, they can't beat a good team. They can't beat a team over 500. Seahawks come into this game limping with a tough remaining schedule. And I think the Cowboys will get it done here. I like them defensively in this matchup. They've put up some really good numbers at home. And like I said, they just don't got to go anywhere. And I think that they'll benefit more from that rest factor than Seattle will. Even though, like I said, it doesn't really benefit anyone. But I'm going to go Dallas on this one to get the job done over the Seahawks. All right, Sunday slate of games. First up, we got the Colts and the Titans in Nashville. As the Colts are coming off a win over the Bucks, but it cost them Jonathan Taylor for a couple of weeks as he is scheduled to have surgery. He is going to miss time. And the Colts, I mean, that's a big blow for them because they've been playing so well offensively over the course of the last month or so. And now they lose Jonathan Taylor. That's going to hurt them for the past, for the next couple weeks as the Colts are in a playoff push, honestly. Then you got Tennessee. Um, the Titans, Derrick Henry, I think needs to step it up for this game. And this is the second straight home game that the Titans are having after those three straight road games that they played. Um... Honestly, I still think the Colts can make it interesting offensively. I like the firepower, the, the newfound firepower that they've had on offense. And Tennessee is just really inconsistent this year. I can never get the Titans right for the life of me. But I think I'm actually going to roll with Tennessee on this one. Mainly because, you know, Derrick Henry, I think it's a get it right game for him. I don't really trust Indy on the ground stopping the run all that much. And number two, the Colts, they have, like the Titans, they have really struggled on the road this year. Um, I believe 
the last time these two teams played was earlier in the year, and the Colts beat them in Indy, and I think Tennessee will return the favor here. I'm going to go with Tennessee to get their second straight dub and give the Colts, or uh, snap the Colts' winning streak here. So I'm going to go Tennessee for this one. All righty, folks. Next up is my toilet bowl of the week, as it is. The Los Angeles Chargers and the New England Patriots going at it. In Foxborough, a couple of last place teams going at it. The Chargers, what else is new for them? Lose a one score game. A game where they were really competitive with the Ravens, but then just an onslaught of mismanagement. Surprise, surprise by Brandon Staley. And then they allowed a Zay Flowers touchdown run for the Ravens to go up by 10, and that sealed the game for them. The Chargers, like I keep saying, until they show me that they can beat a good team and they can win these one-score games, I ain't taking them seriously. But enter the New England Patriots, who are 2-9 and nine on the season, coming off a loss to the New York Giants at MetLife, a game in which the Patriots could have sent the game to OT but missed the game-tying field goal. And Mac Jones, once again, has lost his confidence as Bailey Zappi is really looking like he's probably going to be the starter for the rest of the season for the Patriots as this is now their third losing season since 2020. So I think the Patriots really just ought to tank. I mean, they, they look like that they're in tank mode for the remainder of the season, and I think it's for the best with them. They really need to find that quarterback for the future for them as they're in the talks with the Caleb Williams talks with the Cardinals, I guess. But anyway, you look at it, this has been a disaster of a season for the Patriots, and I really don't know if I can pick them to win another game. I'm going to go with the Chargers here to win this one simply because New England's a weak team and the Chargers, you know, even though I can't take them seriously to win one possession games, I think that they can get the job done over a weak opponent like this. But this has all the makings for a vintage Chargers loss right here. But I'm going to go L.A. to get the job done over the Patriots. It's a trap! That's right. This is one of my trap games of the week. Yes, I said one of my trap games of the week because I, you, you'll know it when you see it. I actually have two trap games this week and they were both really hard to decide on which should be the main one, so I put it for both of them. I usually just, I usually try to find one of these games for the week. Anyway, we got the Lions at the Saints in New Orleans as... The Lions are coming off a really bad game on Thanksgiving last week. Don't let that final score fool you. It's incredibly misleading. Detroit turned the ball over three times. They got all those yards and garbage time down double digits to Green Bay. Jared Goff lost a fumble. And it was just a disaster from the get-go for the Lions. Like the first play of the game, they allowed a big chunk play by Jordan Love. The good news for the Lions, however, though is that they have the rest factor because, you know, they last played on Thanksgiving and now they have three days to rest to get ready for the Saints. But they are traveling down to New Orleans with all that being said. As the Lions, you know, they had one of their worst games. I mean, they're 8-3. They're and three, So, obviously, it's one of their worst games. It's their second worst game of the season behind that Baltimore game they had. But just a really bad game on Thanksgiving for Detroit. But then you got the New Orleans Saints. Um, the Saints, they had some wrongdoings and missed opportunities by themselves. I mean, against Atlanta, they just could not finish a drive. They couldn't get anything going offensively, and they just had to keep settling for field goals. So this, the, this is why it's my trap game of the week, because it's a battle of two teams that are coming off really sloppy performances and... Teams that just were their own worst enemy in Week 12. So, like, something's got to give right here. However, the deciding factor for me outside of the rest factor, because if you've followed my 
picks all year. I tend to go with the team that played on Thursday. But another big deciding factor for me here, personally, is that Dan Campbell has showed a lot of composure and he showed a lot of resilience to show that he's more than capable of rallying the Lions coming off a loss as Detroit has not lost consecutive games this year. The Saints, I mean, they've had their moments this year where they look like they could be a sleeper in the playoffs, but I just don't know what the deal is with New Orleans right now, at least offensively. I think that they'll be good defensively, but in the end, I'm going to roll with the Lions here. I think that they avoid the trap here. I can definitely see New Orleans pulling off the upset, but I just like the Lions to rebound in this one, and I think that they can win a fist fight here over the Saints because I trust Detroit defensively more. So I'm going to go with the Lions to get the job done over the Saints. Next, this one was close to being my toilet bowl of the week, but after I saw that Sunday night game, it takes the cake. But we got the Atlanta Falcons at the Jets in MetLife. As the Falcons are coming off a win over the Saints, 24-15. to Like I said, the Saints just could not finish a drive against the Falcons. And Atlanta played them real well defensively as the Falcons were able to get the job done. Also for the Falcons, finally Arthur Smith used B. John Robinson as he had his best game... Of, as he had his best game of the season this year. And Desmond Ritter has a little bit more confidence going into this one. Now with the Jets, they're an in, they're been a, they went from being the most overrated team in the league to being a team that actually let me down because about a month ago, the Jets were like four and three. And I said that they are one of the most underrated teams in the league. And it showed that they can have all the tough, you know, components with defense that they want, they're always going to be let down by the quarterback. As Tim Boyle, I think, is still going to start for the Jets in this one. And him going up against that Atlanta front right there, I just don't think it'll end well. Sure, the Jets have two extra days of rest because they played on Black Friday. But, and, and you know, sure, the Falcons have been terrible on the road this year, but... I really don't think it matters all that much. I go with the team that I think has more confidence and has better momentum for the game. And in that case, it is the Atlanta Falcons. So I'm going to take them to get the job done over the Jets. Now, fifteen, almost 15 years ago, this matchup between these two franchises was the best moment of my life as a Pittsburgh Steelers fan as Big Ben Roethlisberger found Santonio San Holmes in the back right corner of the end zone for the game-winning touchdown to win our sixth Super Bowl. Fifteen years later, one of the teams is still, you know, a scrappy bunch and it's going to be, and they can make a playoff push. And the other is just one of the worst teams in the league. Arizona Cardinals, and the Pittsburgh Steelers going at it at Heinz Field this Sunday afternoon. I'll get more into it in my pregame that I'll have out on Friday. But to keep it at a minimum, we cannot take this game lightly at all for all the obvious reasons. You look at the Arizona Cardinals at 2-10. and 10. They run a third-generation West Coast offense, so they're going to put a lot of heavy emphasis on Kyler Murray's mobility in the pocket. And that's one of his biggest dynamic attributes as a quarterback because when he's outside the box like that, he can get a lot of good things going. He's got really good pocket awareness. He uh, he gets a lot of positive yards with the runner. He's got real good agility. But the thing that holds him back personally for me is obviously his size and that he doesn't play the middle of the field very well. Um, Arizona does have a couple of good deep threats, and I think Vic Fangio with running the quarter base defense here, so you're going to see a lot of man-on-man -man coverage here, a lot of half coverages here. Um, so yeah, that's it with the Cardinals right there. They have battled a lot in their games this year, but in most cases they just haven't been able to finish, but they have looked significantly better since Kyler Murray came, you know, uh, came back. 
But uh, still, they had a terrible game against the Rams on Sunday, and that's where the Steelers have to come in. The Steelers have not given up 21 or more since week four. We know how to generate a lot of turnovers, and Arizona, while they don't have a ton of turnovers, they aren't particularly great at protecting the football. So that's something that we got to take care of right there. Plus, you got to look out for Kyler Murray's mobility, and that right away is an advantage for the Cardinals because you know how we've been with stopping the run this year. But I think Cam Hayward, his presence, as I keep saying, is definitely going to be felt. Mika Fitzpatrick is most likely going to be back in this game. So in order for us to win, we got to make Kyler Murray beat us the way that he should be able to beat us by not taking the deep threats and we got to make them play across the middle, which we are definitely capable of doing because while we should make the middle of the field a little vulnerable, it should definitely open up Kyler Murray's, you know, inability to read those disguised packages that we're able to, you know, come through with. Then you take a look at us offensively. Um... Yeah, I know 16 points really isn't something to write home about offensively, but 400 yards of total offense for us, over 400 total yards of offense for us, with Eddie Faulkner and Mike Sullivan co-sharing the offensive coordinating responsibilities in the first game, that's a step in the right direction. And I would like to see us take that next step forward not saying that we're going to have 400-yard games every week from here on out, even though that would be awesome if we did, but the next step for us is to score more points. We should have scored more points if A, Mike Tomlin challenged that Deontay Johnson touchdown that was not, and B, if Deontay Johnson can just hold on to the ball and stop being a little bitch in the process. Okay, so that's it right there. Arizona's defense is prone to giving up a lot of points. They allow 26.8 on average this year. So there have been times where we have cracked that. The Steelers this year are undefeated when we score 17 or more points. So I think for us, our magic number is about 20. If we can, if we can crack 20 points in this game, I think we're in really good shape to win this game. But that's only if we do that, and I think that we are capable. Using Pat Fryermuth, using our run game. Kenny Pickett has to have a get-it-right game right here for us. So, in short, uh, you're, you're, you're going to hear a lot of this on Friday in my preview. In short, I am going to go with the Pittsburgh Steelers to keep it rolling to win our second straight game over the Cardinals. I think Arizona is going to give us you know, a good game. But, you know, like the narrative goes for us, it's like, you know, Tomlin always loves to lose these games. Tomlin always plays down a competition. Well, the Steelers are now in the midst of a position to where they can possibly make the playoffs. And it's now December where Tomlin actually has the best winning percentage of his career as a head coach. So, if... All those things hold up true. I think we get the job done over Arizona. It won't be a bloodbath like people say it will be. Just me being a fan of this franchise for over 20 years, I can tell you that right now. But I think we're good enough to get the job done over Arizona here. Again, more in my preview Friday. Up next, we got the Carolina Panthers and the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. And to keep it short, I am going to go with the Tampa Bay Bucks to win this one because the Panthers just fired their head coach in Frank Reich, who I still want us to have as offensive coordinator. But, you know, Carolina, I mean, they're just not a good team at all, man. They have just had a really rough year. And, you know, Bryce Young, it, it just seems like they're setting them up for failure. I mean, this team's 1-10, for crying out loud. The Bucks. it seems like that they can always beat up on the Panthers in Tampa Bay. And I think that narrative will continue right here. So, not much thought. I am going to go with the Bucks to get the job done over the Panthers. 
Then we got the Miami Dolphins at the Washington Redskins. This one is in FedEx as the Dolphins spanked the Jets on Black Friday. And Washington, they got spanked themselves on Thanksgiving. So kind of like the Seahawks and the Cowboys, both these teams don't really have an advantage because they're both well-rested coming into this game. I think Washington has slightly more of it because, you know, they had an extra day of rest compared to Miami's two, but I don't think it matters. This is actually my lock of the week right here. Miami, they beat up on the bad teams. They destroy them, but they don't really do so well against the good teams. Jack Del Real just got fired from Washington and they have now officially pretty much punted the season. I mean, I would too after they drop one of the Giants and then they get embarrassed by the Cowboys on Thanksgiving. I mean, pretty much at the deadline, you knew they were punting the season because they got rid of their entire defense. But regardless, I'm going to go with the Miami Dolphins to get this one real easily over the Washington Redskins. Later slate of Sunday games. First up, we got the Denver Broncos and the Houston Texans. This one is down in Houston as the Broncos have all of a sudden won five straight games and they are 6-5 and five on the season and they are right in the swing of things in the playoff hunt. I mean, sometimes I even forget that the Broncos allowed Miami to score 70 on him. That is how much of a turnaround that the Broncos have made. They have played really well defensively. Russell Wilson even starting to play better. And you got to give it to Sean Payton. He deserves a lot of credit for this turnaround that the Broncos have had since week three. What a turnaround Denver has had. And I honestly hope that they can sneak into the playoffs. Anything can happen. If they get in the playoffs, Denver can be a really tough team to beat. But then you take a look at another good surprise team this year in the Houston Texans. They dropped it to the Jaguars, sure, but still Houston has had a really surprising year this year. CJ Stroud to Tank Dell is becoming a really good is becoming a real exciting dynamic duo in the NFL. And the Broncos, I mean, they're coming off a win of their own. Like I said, they dominated the Cleveland Browns 29-12. to Score Agami, that's the first time that and a game has ever ended with that score. But yeah, there are a lot of good headlines coming into this one. But me personally, the deciding one here, I think it's going to come down to which defense is going to be able to make that play. And for me, it's the Denver Broncos. The Broncos' defense, like I said, has turned it around immensely. They are getting pressure on the quarterback. They are locking down receivers. They are forcing turnovers. They are generating turnovers. They are keeping opponents off the board for as much as they can. Houston, I mean, they have their moments defensively, but sometimes the Texans just... While we have a defense that's like you know, bend but don't break. The Texans are trying to have that same kind of defense, but they just are still going through the growing pains with that type of defense right there. Um, C.J. Stroud going up against, you know, a, a, a tough defense like that, you know, that can cause pressure, and I think it's just a real big mismatch right there as far as the Broncos' pass rush against Houston's O-line goes because they have allowed a lot of sacks this year. In conclusion, Houston is favored by three in this game, but I'm going to go with the Denver Broncos, actually, to keep it rolling. I like, I, I love the momentum they have going in this game. I can't really say it's an upset, because, you know, I really think this game can go either way. The Texans, I think, will definitely put up a good game. But in the end, I'm going to go with the team that has the hotter hand coming in this one. And for right now, it is the Denver Broncos because of the winning streak, the way the defense is gone, the offense is opportunistic. While Houston, you know, I just really don't trust them going up against that Denver defense right now. So I'm going to go with the Broncos to win their sixth in a row. Wow, man. 
Next, we got the Cleveland Browns and the Los Angeles Rams at SoFi. The Browns, I just mentioned, they came off a 29-12 loss to the Denver Broncos, but DTR is in concussion protocol. You know how the NFL runs with concussions, so I do not anticipate him to start in this game against the Rams, so they're probably going to be rolling with P.J. Walker. But that's not all. Miles Garrett isn't 100% for this game either. He said he felt like a little pop in his shoulder or whatever it was. But the point is, Miles Garrett isn't 100% good to go. And that is not good right off the bat for the Cleveland Browns. Then you got the Los Angeles Rams who dominated the Cardinals. And Kyron Williams, since coming off IR has been really good. He had a really good game against the Cardinals last Sunday. And the Rams seem to have like a formula. If they score at least 24 points, they're in really good position to win a game. And that's just been the theme for the Rams this year, ever pretty much ever since Matthew Stafford came back. The Browns, while they still have a phenomenal defense, they have given up a lot of points over the past couple of weeks. I think in three of the last four weeks, the Browns have allowed 25 or more points three times. You know, they gave up 31 to the Ravens, and then they obviously are coming off giving up 29 to Denver. So it's like, you know what, in, in two of the last three, I should say. Two of the last three, the Browns' defense has given up a lot of points. And with the Rams being on a scoring binge right now, and with the way that they can put together a good offensive showing, I am going to go with the Los Angeles Rams to keep it going here. Um, the Browns, I think with them having to stay on the West Coast, it doesn't, you know, it serves as a little bit of a benefit for them, but they're traveling from Denver to LA. I wouldn't be saying this if the Browns had to stay in California. But you get the point. I am actually going to go with the Rams to get the job done over the Cleveland Browns here because I think the Rams have better momentum. And I'm not so sure about Cleveland right now. I think the injuries are starting to pile up on them. And I don't really know how they're going to manage if Miles Garrett can't play in this game and what their quarterback situation is going to be like. So I am going to go with the Rams in this one. We have a rematch of the NFC Championship game, and this is my game of the week right here. It is the San Francisco 49ers and the Philadelphia Eagles going at it at the link. Ten months ago, these two met in the NFC Championship, and the Eagles blew the doors off the 49ers 31-7. Brock Purdy did get injured in that game and CMC was a non-factor in that one, but it just seems like the 49ers are a better team, honestly, since that game. But right off the bat, I'm telling you, it's not going to be easy for them with A, playing back-to-back -back road games, and B, flying from Seattle to Philly. Um, the 49ers, sure, they got the job done handily over Seattle, but there were moments where the Seahawks gave the 49ers some scares in that game, more more so in the third quarter, where I think the Seahawks actually had a pick six against the 40, uh, against Brock Purdy, but then San Francisco was able to keep it down and they were able to get their composure back on track and they were able to finish off the Seahawks. So San Francisco, I think for them to win this game, they got to do what they keep doing. They just got to go run heavy and they got our jam it down Philly's throat. The Eagles have not really looked good on the run. You know, the Eagles, I mean, they really have had up and down moments on the ground this year. But I think Brock Purdy should have a, you know, get it right game as far as his pass game goes. Because Philly's pass defense has looked really spotty this year. So I think that's a big advantage for San Francisco. But the Eagles, they're coming off a thrilling win in overtime against the Buffalo Bills, 37-34. Jalen Hurts ran it in for the game-winning score in overtime. And the Eagles, I mean, they just keep finding ways to win games. You take a look at what 
how the Browns were able to beat the 49ers earlier in the season. How did Cleveland do it? They were running the ball effectively and they were getting pressure on Brock Purdy. Philly definitely does have that defense that can cause pressure and they absolutely will be able to beat you on the ground with Jalen Hurts and DeAndre Swift. So I think right there, Philly is just a really bad matchup for San Francisco here as far as how they're able to be beaten. The 49ers, I mean, they got off to that amazing 5-0 start. Then they dropped three, three in a row. Then they, now they're on a tear again. They're back to being five games over 500 since the bye week. They've won three in a row coming off the bye. But when you're like a roller coaster team and you're having a roller coaster type of season and you're going into a hostile environment like Philly, who's just been consistent all year, they had that one bad game against the Jets, but the Eagles have just been really consistent all season. I tend to roll with the team that I just tend to trust more. And with me, it's the Eagles. San Francisco, I want to pick you. I really want to believe that they can go in there and get their revenge on the Eagles. But I trust Philly more. I don't see the I don't see the 49ers really going in there and with everything that's against them for this game, getting the job done. I don't think they'll lose by 24. I think that it'll be like in the realm of, you know, about a four or five point game. But I'm going to make this my spread of the week. I got the Eagles winning this one 28 to 24. So give me Philly to beat the 49ers once again. But I got it being a much better show in this time. Sunday night. It's a trap. It is a, another Super Bowl rematch. It was the first Super Bowl, as a matter of fact between the Kansas City Chiefs and the Green Bay Packers as the Chiefs are coming off a win against the Las Vegas Raiders, but the Chiefs had a little bit of trouble in that game, finding themselves down in an early 14 to nothing hole. They had to rally back and beat Vegas, so credit to them. They got the job done, and they ended up winning, what, 31-17. to They won by two scores over Vegas, but the fact that they needed to rally to beat the Vegas Raiders. That's a little bit alarming for Kansas City right there. But then you got to take a look at the Green Bay Packers. Not only did they beat the Lions on Thanksgiving, but Jordan Love in back-to-back -back weeks has looked great. Easily the two best games of his career. He's finding his guys. He's finding confidence. He's reading the field better. Green Bay has a very underrated defense, in my opinion, and they can definitely put the heat on Patrick Mahomes in this game because the number one thing on how to beat Mahomes is that you gotta cause, you gotta make him play honest, and you gotta cause, you gotta cause pressure on him. Green Bay definitely does have that defense. Now the Packers, I don't know about Aaron Jones. That's pretty much been the story all season for Aaron Jones. I don't know the status of him. And yes, as you can tell, this is my second trap game of the week. I should have said it at the beginning of the slide. This is my second trap game of the week. And for good reason. The Packers dominated Detroit on Thanksgiving, causing turnovers, getting in Jared Goff's face. And they pretty much just held it from head to toe. They're taking shots down the field. Kansas City's defense is underrated too, and I really do think that the Chiefs will be able to test Jordan Love in this game here. But to me, it comes down to who wants it more. You know, I think both these teams are kind of in desperation mode because now the Chiefs have the Broncos nibbling on their ankles in the AFC West. But Green Bay, I think, is more desperate coming into this one because not only... Have they won two in a row? But they want to prove to everybody that they're still in it in the NFC. And the Packers also have that rest factor. You know, and typically in situations like that, I tend to go with the team that played Thursday. And that's what I'm going to do here. This is my upset of the week, guys. Jordan Love and that defense... 
has me believing in the Packers for this matchup here, and that's why it's my upset of the week. Because the Chiefs, they have some injuries as far as their weaponry goes offensively, and MVS, a former Packer, by the way, has been very unreliable for Kansas City this year. Dropping some big passes that could have had Kansas City have at least two more wins with their record. And them going up to Green Bay, facing the well-rested Packers on Sunday Night Football, who have a ton of momentum right now. I'm going with the upset here, boys. Give me the Packers to upset the Kansas City Chiefs for Week 13 Sunday Night Football. Wrapping up Week 13, we got Monday Night Football down in Jacksonville between the Bengals and the Jaguars. And to keep it short, I am going to go with the Jaguars to win this game. Joe Burrow out for the rest of the season. The Bengals look deplorable against us. Uh, Couldn't get anything going offensively. And the Bengals defense allowed the Steelers to get 400 yards of offense. And they're going up against Trevor Lawrence, a.k.a. a top 10 QB in the league. The Bengals are done. When Joe Burrow got hurt, their season just ended. I don't know if I can pick the Bengals to win another game this year. I think the defense can keep it a little bit competitive, but overall, Jacksonville just seems like the the much better choice going into this one. So, yeah, I'm going to go with Jacksonville to win this one pretty handily here over the Bengals. And Jacksonville, you know, another thing for them, they just have a ton of momentum. They've won seven out of their last eight, I believe. The Bengals, I mean, they're ice cold. They're two teams that are heading in the opposite direction. Give me Jacksonville to get the job done over the Bengals. And that'll do it. Those are my Week 13 picks of the 2023 NFL season. Tourney members, yins know what to do. This is Mac checking on out for the day. Have a good one, everybody.